We honor on this night, in a solemn way, those who lost their lives and those who love them. We honor, in a grateful way, on this night, the people who, often at great risk to themselves, save lives over and over and over again. Ten years after America saw video of bodies floating in the streets of New Orleans, we were forced to ask ourselves if we really learned anything from Hurricane Katrina, other than the Army Corps of Engineers did a terrible job preparing the levees, and that the local New Orleans government was about as inept as they could possibly be, then choosing to blame the feds for everything that went wrong. From a media that fueled the tragedy with packs of lies to the reality that in many cases, once something like this hits, forget the government saving you. You are, for the most part, and for a good time after the disaster, on your own until those people come in to save the day. Let's dig in with the retired U.S. Army General who was commander of the Joint Task Force on Katrina and came to be known as the Category 5 General. Also author of the book, Leadership in the New Normal, Lieutenant General Russell Honore. Lieutenant General, thank you so much for being here this evening. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here. It is an honor to speak to you after all the work that you did, but the first thing that comes to my mind is you saw the tragedy up close and personal. Are you still to this day haunted by some of the things that you saw, knowing that proper preparation might have saved a lot of those lives? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, the biggest, uh, if we had an 80% evacuation of the city, the problem is the people I didn't evacuate, many of them were elderly, disabled, and poor. And uh, it was the 29th of the month when the storm hit, and um, many of them had no place to go and no way to get there uh, in the evacuation process. So it was a sad thing to see. Uh, and in a disaster like Katrina, with all honesty, though, you're never going to be there on time. Uh, we were, we could have probably been there a day or so earlier if we were better at what we were doing. But we had not done an evacuation or a response in this nation to a catastrophic event like this. The other thing is 80% of the city was underwater. That made a difference. All the airports were closed. So it limits our response. We got a rapid, deployable response capacity, but that's dependent on airfields and roads. And as you know, we had problems with all of that. So uh, uh, 10 years ago today, I arrived in New Orleans at 9.47 in the morning. The storm hit Monday. Tuesday, I went to Mississippi. And Wednesday morning at 9.45, I was in New Orleans. 10 years ago, right now, as you look at your watch, I just left the governor in uh, uh, Louisiana in Baton Rouge and flown back into New Orleans, and we were finalizing the evacuation plan to put people on the bus uh, tomorrow morning, with 10 years ago, and start getting them out of the Superdome. Was it, in your opinion, a lack? You said that we weren't ready. We didn't realize. Was it a lack of imagination and even more so just a complacency? that set in from the mayor, from the governor? Because we hear these warnings all the time, but sometimes we just have to react. The power of this storm, you could see it coming on the radar. It seems as if there was just a complacency. Don't worry, Lieutenant General. It'll all work out. There won't be a problem. Am I right? Well, the game changer was when the levees broke. When the levees broke uh, Monday night, Tuesday morning, that was a game changer. If the levees hadn't broken, it would have been what we call a normal hurricane down here. But maybe it was a, a little bit of that lack of imagination, because that, that imagination might have led us to believe something like this could happen. It's if we thought it would never happen. It could never happen in a million years. Well, I'm, I'm just telling you that, uh, number one, fact is, on any given day, Mother Nature can break anything built by man. Yes. Number two, that, call, that storm kicked our butt. It broke our communication system, and it flooded the city. It defeated us. And we could have responded better. I'm not going to uh, give any excuse for that. But you start off with when you have been defeated, you've got to recover. And we could have recovered better and more efficiently. But the fact that we couldn't talk between New Orleans and Baton Rouge was a problem. And people got confused because they saw the national media fly their folks in there on jets and yep. ran them into town on an SUV and said, hey, well, if uh, the media is here, where is the government? Well, well let me do this. Different. 
Lieutenant General, I only got 30 seconds left. I need to ask one thing that you have always said, and let me paraphrase it. Are we still stuck on stupid in preparing for such disasters, in your opinion? Yes, sir. Uh, I think only 20% of the American public spend any time being ready for the most likely preparedness issues they face, whether it's floods, fires, or earthquakes. Only 20% do preparedness work. Ladies and gentlemen, do yourself a favor. Go back and look at what happened 10 years ago. Don't be part of that group that is not ready. Listen to things that the general and others say. Lieutenant General Russell Honore, thank you again for your service, for your time, and for your efforts. You still are a hero in the aftermath of Katrina. We thank you. And thanks to all the volunteers who came to help. There thank you go. You we'll do that as well. Thank you so much. The fastest 60 Minutes of News, the hard line, continues.